Let's discuss the concept of marginal rate of technical substitution in this video. But before that, let's just recall the marginal rate of substitution from consumers so we can understand the analogy better. Because if we get the analogy, it's going to be very easy to replicate. Now recall the marginal rate of substitution when it came to consumer behavior. It was the willingness to exchange apples for bananas while keeping the same utility. So we were giving up. We were giving up some apples. We were giving up some apples in exchange for one more bananas for one more banana and what 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 did that what did that trade off give us well that trade off had to give us had to give us a marginal utility from the banana because we were acquiring one more banana so we were giving up let's say at this point for instance we had this this willingness to exchange right which is a slope uh, a slope to the curve and we were giving up we were giving up some apples in exchange for one more banana and from that banana we were getting additional utility so the marginal utility to banana relative to the utility that we were foregoing so the utility from apples that we were giving up that was the relationship of the marginal rate of substitution so we had we we had this relationship holding with the same logic we can apply to the marginal rate of technical substitution so at the marginal rate of technical substitution is the willingness to exchange labor for capital or in other words how much capital do we have to give up let's say at this point it's going to be again a slope so it's going to be a derivative it's going to be a rate of change how much capital do we have to give up to get one more unit of labor while we still have 10 cars in production so we're giving up we're giving up capital relative to labor we're getting one more labor and what do we get in exchange we're getting additional production we're getting the marginal production from that one more unit of labor marginal production from that one more unit of labor and we are giving up the marginal production that we could have gotten from an additional unit of capital so we are increasing labor by one unit we are getting marginal production from that labor and we're giving up the S some capital which means we're foregoing some production that we could have had from that capital that is the relationship between these two now if we do the cross product what does that mean if we do the cross product it shows us that the marginal production from the capital times the change in capital must be the same as the marginal production from labor times the change in labor now what's the interpretation here well because we're keeping the same production the additional production that we would get from what we give up in capital must be the same as the additional production that we get from increasing the labor. So I hope this makes sense. We are giving up a bit of capital. So we are giving up that. We could have produced something with it, but in exchange, we are producing it with the labor. So it has to be compensated by the labor that we have here, the one more employee that we have and the marginal production that he gives to us. I hope this makes sense and we are done.